Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. I want to talk to you today about something that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me that I think will be a blessing to people. And even if it's not something that is your problem, you may be able to see where other things are being used in the same way against you that you didn't realize were an attack of the devil. And what I'm going to talk about today is pornography and sex magic. And that it is witchcraft that is being used against believers. And before I go any further, I want to open this message up with prayer. Abba Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I come before you on behalf of these, your people who are listening, and those that may happen upon this that may not even be believers. And I pray right now, your Holy Spirit and your most powerful anointing on this message, Lord, that it gives you all praise, honor, and glory. I invite your beautiful and wonderful Holy Spirit to speak through me and to anoint this message that it may minister grace and healing and be powerful to those who are listening, to those who are hearers. And I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The Holy Spirit showed me that a lot of people are struggling who are believers with something that they are condemning themselves for and blaming themselves for and the enemy is using this vicious cycle of guilt, shame, condemnation to bring back more feeling of unworthiness, to bring you back into using it and doing it, to bring you around again full circle in this never-ending vicious cycle of what if really becomes is a believer being ineffectual. Because if you're caught in that trap, and it doesn't have to necessarily be pornography, it could be something else. He is using that against you and trying to trick you into staying in that circle. Because you will never progress and you will never get out of it until you break that under the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of King Jesus. And it is once that you realize that it is witchcraft that is being used against you. That it is sex magic in the case of pornography that is being used against you. You get angry about it. You're not going to let the devil continue to play with you this way. See, he's tricked you into thinking that you're doing something and that it's all you and that the problem lies with you and only in you. And that's a half truth. He's a master at half truths. You're giving the devil place. Nobody's making you do it. The devil's not making you do it. Remember, the Bible says that a man, when he is tempted, he is tempted and drawn away by his own lust and enticed. So what you are doing is giving an occasion to the flesh, but the devil is actually using strong witchcraft against you in the form of sex magic, which is what pornography really is. And what you need to understand, it is a, it is a spiritual attack of the enemy against you or against your loved one who might be struggling with it. See, they think they're struggling with sin. That's the least part of it. So the devil wants you focused on sin because if he can get you focused on sin instead of the son, S-O-N, then he'll have you looking at your defeatedness instead of the victory in Jesus. See, our power does not come from within ourselves. In other words, if I can just will it so, it'll be so. No. It comes through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. You are 
the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I don't care how detestable, depressed, upset, um, ashamed, guilty you feel. You must stop embracing those feelings and the lies that the devil speaks to you. And you must begin to speak life to your life, which is the words of the living God and what he has said about you. It does not matter what you just did or what you have done. All sin, all your sin, if you are a believer, has been paid for on Calvary by King Jesus. He declared to tell us die, which means paid in full. That's past, present, and future. So your focus needs to be on the Lamb of God. The Bible tells us, behold, what, our sin, our weakness, our degradation, our flaws? No. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the whole world. Do not look at yourself. If you look at yourself, you will be defeated. Because self don't have nothing to do with this. This is the finished work of Christ. You must look at who you are, not will be, who you are in Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are, what? All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I know when God says all, he doesn't mean some, he doesn't mean most, he doesn't mean many, he means all. All things in you, beloved, have become new. The trick of the enemy is to keep you beholding yourself instead of the Lamb of God. Don't fall for his lies, his deception. His treachery. Pornography is witchcraft. It is sex magic that is being used against you. It is an attack of the enemy. To keep you defeated. And to keep you ineffectual. Because then he has one less believer he has to worry about. Kicking down and tearing down his strongholds in Jesus' name. Because, see, you're not going to pray for the sick if you feel unworthy and like a wretch and a miserable, detestable sinner. You're not going to be um, casting out devils in Jesus' name if you feel miserable, detestable, worthless, uh, shame, full of shame. He can keep you in this vicious circle, licking your wounds instead of being a conqueror. Taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And doing battle against him in the spirit by praying in the spirit and coming against him. Because the Bible is clear that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And unfortunately, the devil has tricked people in their minds to think that the gates of hell are coming up against you. No, you need to understand, beloved, gates are a defensive we weapon or a defensive tool. They're not an offensive measure. Gates are to keep the enemy out. So if we're going up against the gates of hell and that they will not prevail against the church, that means we coming after them. And he said, they will not prevail against the church. I hear all these uh, people pull mouthed about all the things that's going on. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We ain't supposed to be looking at what's going on physically. 
Our battle is in the spirit. And we need to be tearing down Satan's strongholds in prayer and speaking the word of the living God and ministering and seeking and saving that which is lost. That's what we're called to do. This world system is going to crash and burn. There ain't no saving it. And people are deluded thinking they're going to save it. You will see that the Apostle Paul never spoke to us about what people try to say we need to bring the kingdom of God here on this earth. The Bible does not say that. The kingdom is within us. You remember Abraham, the Bible says that he was seeking a, a place whose builder and maker was God. Not looking for this earthly thing. Everybody keeps wanting to change this world. The only one that's going to change it is King Jesus. When he steps his foot on the Mount of Olives and it splits in two and he judges the wicked and gives them their just desserts. And then the Bible says the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. Set your hearts toward home. That's where our hope is. Peace on earth is not going to come until all hell breaks loose. And Jesus steps in to save humanity from complete and utter destruction, which is the devil's goal. I don't often speak on social matters because I know that this is a spiritual battle. And it's too easy to get caught up in what we see and what we hear and forget that it's the things that are behind the things that we see and hear. Those spiritual entities that are causing this. And King Jesus gave us authority over those entities here on this earth. And he told us what we bind what? On earth shall be bound in heaven. And what we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But believers are not doing what the Lord told us to do. If there be any sick among you, let him run to the doctor and get a prescription. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. That's not in the Bible. If there be any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and the prayer of faith will save the sick. I mean, either we believe this stuff or we don't. There's an old saying, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you're going to keep on getting what you've always gotten. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of Satan's what? Stronghold. So the Holy Spirit is giving you insight this day that you found this message. And I hope you make it go viral and you share it with other believers. Just share it with them. If they get offended, press on. Because, see, there, sh there might be somebody in their life that is struggling with this. A husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a, 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 a uncle, somebody that is struggling with this. They're a believer and they think the problem is them. What you don't understand is you open the door, you give Satan place, but he is using witchcraft against you. This is spiritual. It's more than just you being disciplined in your flesh. That is a part of it, but that's not the greatest part of it. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. We need to be praying, beloved. And I'm going to tell you, when you first start doing it, whenever you're in a spiritual battle, it feels like you are rolling a 400-pound boulder uphill by yourself. And sometimes you can even feel the, the oppression upon your person, on your shoulders, or on your chest. Even as you lay in bed, you will feel the oppression of the enemy to try to discourage you and to keep you 
down. But the devil is a liar. And you must begin to open your mouth and speak the word of the living God against the enemy. For he is a lie and the truth ain't in him. And every time you do, you are chipping away with what is quick and powerful. That sharp two-edged sword against the enemy. And gradually as you do it, it will begin to get easier and easier and easier and as I've told people before and I'm going to say it again if you can't pray because the oppression is so heavy the Bible says there is victory in praise so praise King Jesus and that will begin to tear down that oppression that you're feeling and then you can begin to pray if you can't pray praise and then once you've praised and you've lifted that oppression, pray. Stop looking at yourself. Look at King Jesus. Behold the Lamb. Behold what he has done for you. You do have the victory in that situation. I don't care what it looks like. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But understand what is being done to you by the enemy. See, he's got you thinking, oh, it's my sin. I'm just such a sinner. I'm so miserable and detestable. And you're not beholding the lamb and what he has done for you. So he keeps you in that, that mindset to be defeated and to return to it like a dog to its vomit. It's a trick of the enemy. He's using mind games against you. Look into the word. See what the Lord, King Jesus, has said about you. And confess that about yourself. I know you're not going to believe it the first 25 times you say it. Maybe even the first 100 times you say it. Because of how you feel. But it doesn't matter how you feel. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. King Jesus said it. King Jesus said it. So that makes it true. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't even matter what I think. King Jesus said it. So I'm going to align my thoughts. With what King Jesus said. Speak life to your life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. So speak life to your life, which is to speak what this word says about you. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't care if you just said five seconds ago. And get up and move on and keep on confessing what the word of God says about you. Keep beholding the Lamb of God and align yourself with what you see about him in the scriptures. And most importantly, what he has said about you. The Lord loves you and you must understand that he doesn't love any other person. More than he loves you. And you should tell yourself that every day. How much the Lord loves you. So in closing beloved. Take some time to understand. That this is a spiritual battle. That the enemy is using witchcraft against you. And his minions who have created all this filthiness that's all over the internet and all over the place is directed at you. It is, it is witchcraft and magic that is being directed at you to try to kill you, steal from you and destroy you. 
while he may not be able to take your life, if he can kill other things in your life, then then he's very comfortable doing that. He's happy with that. You give Satan no place. Don't make an occasion for the flesh. But also understand, if you get a draw or a pull, understand that's probably not even you. It is witchcraft trying to entice you and to pull you into it and to suck you back into it. Familiar spirits trying to draw you back. And you need to bind them in the name of Jesus. And loose the Heavenly Father's ministering spirits to go forth and minister on behalf, what, of those who are heirs to salvation. That's you, beloved. And submit yourself to the Lord. Read his word. Pray, if necessary, fast. But understand that it is witchcraft that is being used against you to keep you defeated, to give the devil a stronghold in your life, to give him an occasion in your life to hope for, uh, on his part to be able to hope to come in and cause all hell to break loose. It's witchcraft being used against you. The Bible says, and they, speaking of believers, overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Don't forget to call on the blood of the Lamb against the enemy to break the power of darkness and continue to behold the Lamb and see who you are in Christ and that the devil is a liar and he's already defeated. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in Jesus' name, amen.